do with illnesses now. As I was saying, when the tape shot off, that uh, I went to, with Eileen to, to the city hospital because she was having a, a blood test for some trouble. And then later on in the month, Mum went to see Dr. Hutchinson again because her ear was troubling her that much. And uh, the next thing, on October the 29th, Eileen had a major operation at Peel Street. On November the 2nd, she was moved to Ad Bolton Hall, a, a kind of a hospital annex. And then uh, on the 9th, she was there until the 19th. And she came out of hospital on the 19th. But on the 18th, Mum had gone into hospital for an ear operation. And she was in t till the 22nd of November before she came out of hospital. She... Uh, Ah, oh, they'd, they'd put a tube in Mum's ear, uh, hoping that uh, it would kind of keep it open and keep it from getting blocked up with fluid. In April of 1969, uh, Sheila and Frank in the car, they brought my sister Alice over to see us from Derby because she's going to leave Derby. She's going to leave, live with my sister uh, Mary, who's got, who's left, uh, left her bungalow at Prestatin, and is now living in a, a bungalow. Well, in fact, it's a house of her own in uh, Rain Hill, and uh, Alice is going to live with her. There's plenty of room for the two of them. The next thing was on June the 11th, it was the rally pensioners outing to Unstanton. And I always went on these because, uh, well, it was a change to get away. And, and not only that, you had a nice day's outing and you met a lot of your old work uh, mates and you were able to have a chat with them. And then, on July the 2nd, Mum went to see Dr. McLeod. He was a, another specialist in, in ear trouble. And it appeared that uh, this tube that had been put in her ear wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. In fact, uh, she'd, over, the, over the last week or two, she'd been in a lot of pain and whether it, it was festering or not, I don't know, but the, up, the upshot of it was that she had to have the tube removed. And uh, on uh, July the 20th, uh, the, the subject uh, in, on everybody's tongues was that, that the Americans had landed men on the moon. And this was marvellous. Of course, there have been uh, trials going on for a long time. They'd been sending men up into space, something that had never been done before, and they'd gone right to the moon and gone round it. But for men to actually land on the moon, well, you, you can imagine what it, it meant to be. If somebody had told me when I was a boy that men were going to land on the moon, well, I'd have thought he wasn't all there. In August of this year, uh, Joan and her family moved from Ollybush to Swanmore. The, the old lady who'd owned the farm that Bill had been farming for her had died and uh, she'd... She'd, uh, her, the relatives who had inherited the farm from her didn't intend to... Fa well, they weren't interested in farming as such, and so they intended to so sell the farm. So Bill had to look for another job, and he got this job in Swanmore, near Southampton. So they, they had to move again. 
John had had quite a lot of moving from one farm to another, but uh, it couldn't be helped. Of course, after the move, John needed a change to get a, I mean, it's no easy job moving, and especially when you move a distance. And uh, so after the moving was over, Joan brought Chris along with her. He was only a, bo a boy at the time. And uh, they stayed with us for a few days. And this December seemed to be an unfortunate month for us this year because both Mum and I got a good dose of flu with our temperatures and not, which knocked us both off our feet. And then on Christmas Day, when we were looking forward to seeing the special television programmes, the, the TV folded up. And of course, we couldn't get any attention to it on Christmas Day or even Boxing Day. So we were without television for a day or two. In 1970, I got a special award of merit from the Amalgamated Engineering Union. Uh, but after I'd retired, of course, I'd taken office again at uh, the union and I'd become president again and various other jobs in addition. And it meant that uh, I'd and uh, been, I had over 40 years of uh, membership as an officer of the union and the special award of merit was for 40 years. The, the ordinary award of merit was for 25 years but uh, I got this special award of merit and it was uh, presented to me by the union's general secretary at a special do that we had in uh, Not Nottingham Corp in the ballroom. And because uh, Mum didn't want to come with me, well, in fact, she wasn't all that well, but so I took Sheila along with me because we were out instead of uh, Mum. And uh, there was other men, it, from the Nottingham district, besides me, who were getting the award, but there was only one or two that were getting the special award of fought over 40 years. Most of them were just for the 25 years. But uh, we had a, they had a tea, and then a bit of a kind of a concert, and then a dance, and of course uh, all the usual... Uh, speeches at occasions like that. Uh, rather unfortunately, later on, this particular sec general secretary from London, he was a very nice fellow, and he, he was killed in an aeroplane accident. He'd flown to Paris to attend a, a union meeting in Europe, and Something happened. The the plane. Something happened to the plane, and it came. It uh, smashed down, and all the people in it were killed. And he was one of them. It was a pity because he, he was only in his. He'd only be about forty, between forty and fifty, wasn't an old man. Well, I was doing plenty of work in the garden, of course, while I was at home, especially in the summer months. But uh, I'd got an apple tree that uh, was, it had been causing a lot of trouble. I'd had to spray it and uh, it was still getting what they call woolly affies and things like that and, and grubs. Uh, there was a, a kind of a grub that uh, it was laid by some insect and the, the, the egg uh, was laying in the blossom of the apple tree so that you had no idea that the, 
that the, 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 the egg was there until the grub developed after the apples came on the tree and they, they were to the outside. And although I kept spraying it, it seemed to get worse and worse, so I decided to dig it out. And it, it was a big job too, because I'd got to dig a, a trench uh, about two feet deep uh, and about a yard uh, diameter all round the tree to cut the roots off because the roots had gone so far underground it was the only way I could get the tree out. Well, I did a lot of back bending and after I'd, I'd uh, got it out I was sawing it and, and into logs and uh, unfortunately at the end of the day uh, I got uh, a bad back through it and uh, Oh, it was, uh, I'll tell you, it was really bad. I could, I could hardly move. It was, uh, I forget what you call, oh, lumbago. What they call lumbago. It got me right, right in the back and I could hardly, I could hardly get up straight. And it was terribly painful. And, in fact, uh, I went to bed and... I tried to get rid of it with one way or another, rubbing it with embrocation and putting the hot water bottle to it, but it didn't seem to get any better. So I had to have the doctor in the end. And it, although it, he gave me the usual medicines and all things like that, but it took me a really long time to get over it. In fact, it was in November when it happened, and in the January of the following year, 1971, my brother Alfred died. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Alf, Alf and I had been very pally, even when we were young boys together, because uh, he was my next, he was a bit older than me, but uh, we'd both been in the, we were both in the First World War and we both had a lot in common and uh, we thought a lot of one another and I, I was quite upset because I couldn't go to his funeral but uh, I tried I tried my best but I realised it was no use. And it, it really took me six months before I got right again. It seemed chiefly b bad news uh, at the beginning of the year because mum had to go and see Mr McLeod again because she was having more trouble with her ear. In fact, she never really stopped having trouble with it. She never got right. But uh, she, naturally, she kept on trying as long as there was any hope. Then uh, that was in... That was in January of 1971. And then in April, Joan had a bad attack of blood pressure. And, well, she was in uh, on May of that year, it was our golden wedding anniversary. And by that time, uh, Joan wasn't able to come to the celebration. In fact it was found that Joan had something more serious than just blood pressure and uh, at the time when we were celebrating our golden wedding anniversary uh, she was in actually in hospital in Southampton and later on I did manage to pay her a visit while she was in hospital. On May the 9th, 1972, my sister Mary died. So I went to the Alt and attended to Mary's funeral. Now, my sister Mary never had any children and uh, she owned her own house and of course her husband had died previously so that uh, 
when the it, what it meant was that uh, she'd left uh, 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 she'd left the house and all that belonged to her to be shared amongst her still living brothers and sisters. So, although I was very sorry that Mary had died, we were pleased, naturally, but I don't want you to take it the long way. I didn't look at it in that light at all. But we were pleased that uh, she'd left the money to us. It was very good of her. She couldn't have done anything with the money. But uh, it helped us along a bit, that did. In fact, it's still helping me along today. I'm a bit confused at the moment, to tell the truth, because uh, in my notes I've got that uh, in, on July, and this is 1972, that on July the... 31st, Joan came and stayed with us for a few days and she went back on August the 5th. Then I've got August the 22nd, Joan is in hospital and on the 24th she was operated on for carcinoma. Well, I know all this happened but uh, I don't know whether I've got the right dates down. Because then I've got August the 30th, I travelled to Southampton to see Joan. And, and the, then December of the third, same year, grandson David married. Well, I don't know whether the dates are right there, but uh, you know that better than me. Well, there seems to be a gap in my notes uh, covering, uh, for the years covering uh, 1970, 1972, no, 1973 and 1974. I can't find any notes at all on that particular period. And I'm sure it must have been some time in that period then that Martin got married to Jill Ward. And uh, if it was, I might say that it was a very nice wedding. Uh, we went to a little place uh, on the outside of Leicester and we, they were married in a church there. And then uh, we, I've forgotten the name of the place where the elder reception, but I do know that we had a, quite a, a nice do. And uh, it must have been, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't 1974. Uh, in 1975, uh, the count, the Beeston Council had uh, decided on an improvement scheme for council houses and our house came under this scheme. So, and so it, the idea was that we had to move out temporarily while the old house was improved. And uh, while while the work was being done on the houses, we went into a, what they call a mobile home, kind of a caravan affair, but, uh, a little bit bigger than the normal caravan, and it certainly had everything up to date, considering, uh, because uh, we moved there on the 1st of April, and we... Uh, we we were quite comfortable and quite happy while we were there. Although, of course, uh, it, we, we wouldn't have liked to stay in it for years on end. It, it was all right for a short spell. Although Mum liked it so much, she said she'd like to stay in it. But, of course, uh, there's not much room for doing things in 
those kind. As I say, they're all right for a short time, but I wouldn't like to live in one for any length of time. Well, we were away about a couple of months while they were doing the house, and when we came back with, into the house, uh, well, we were quite pleased. Uh, I was at any rate, because uh, it got rid of the old coal fires, and now we had gas fire and central heating. We'd got a new bathroom upstairs with the, with the radiator in it and uh, also a toilet so that we'd really got two toilets, one up and one down. But uh, the kitchen, well, it, it was marvellous. They'd made it a lot bigger They'd, uh, because the bathroom had be da been downstairs before and uh, that part of the bathroom that uh, wasn't needed now had been added to the kitchen to make it bigger. And we'd got, uh, we'd got, we'd got different things, a, a modern sink and modern cupboards and uh, uh, we'd got a, a radiator too in the kitchen and then in addition to that, we, I bought a, a refrigerator and of course we'd already got a, a decent gas stove so that, uh, well, uh, it was big enough to live in really. I, I mean, it was big enough to make a living room out of if you wanted to. On the 15th of June that year, Sheila went into Peel Street Women's Hospital for an operation. She was in there a fortnight before she came back home. I think uh, she's probably better as a result of the operation. We'll enjoy a bit better health now. Although she's never been one who's always ailing, and uh, that summer too was a, quite a warm summer. The hottest day that summer was 32 degrees centigrade, which is quite, it's really hot that is. There wasn't much else uh, happened, not uh, worth commenting on, apart from the fact that, of course, where, the, where there's big families there's, and you're getting on in years, there's always some dying, so that in the December of that year, Mam's sister Alice uh, died. And in the next year, 1976, uh, it, we'd only got to February before Mam had word that her, her brother, a uh, 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 brother, wife, Tom, a uh, uh, brother Tom's wife rather, had died and then uh, in March that we received news that uh, a niece of mine, Mona Campbell, her husband had died suddenly and that, that the next thing though was, was a joyful affair because that was Sheila's silver wedding. And then uh, the next thing that happened of any importance was that on the 13th of May, I started with the pains, which, severe pains, which the doctor diagnosed as gallstones. Of course, he wasn't sure. He gave me some stuff to take, some tablets, and uh, he, he said he'd get me to hospital to be x-rayed. Well, I waited about a month before I got word to go to the hospital to be x-rayed, 
and uh, I'd taken all these tablets that the doctor had given me and by that time I was feeling a lot better. Uh, so, of course, uh, but uh, eventually I did have to go for the x-rays and uh, in, in fact I went two or three times the last, uh, the final time when uh, I had an examination and kind of an x-ray that lasted about two hours it was uh, discovered that I had a gallstone and but it mustn't have been a very big one or it, because uh, they, they, the uh, doctor at the hospital asked me if I'd like to come in and have my gall, gall bladder removed because that was what they usually did if you had any gall bladder trouble but uh, I didn't see why I should have an operation uh, when the pain had gone and it wasn't, wasn't troubling me any longer so I said no uh, uh, I didn't want to have the operation well, and, and that, that uh, as you can see, 1976, that's just 10 years ago from the time when I'm uh, making this recording and I've had no further trouble with it, so evidently I was right in refusing to have the operation. Then a bit later, Joan's youngest boy, Chris, he uh, had had an accident on his motorcycle and he was in hospital and he was in hospital quite a long time and uh, I, I can say today that although he's uh, knocking about all right now uh, it, I don't think he's uh, ever got completely rid of the effects of it 1976 was a we had a, a, another very hot summer it's uh, not usual I know in this country so we've got to be thankful for small mercies and uh, on September the 2nd we we had news that Mam's Auntie has died uh, she was a spinster she'd never married and she'd uh, been living with well she'd been living with alone for a long time and then she had uh, a younger brother living with her for a time and uh, then she went into hospital for something. Well, uh, uh, they, they had a bit of an accident in the kitchen and I, I forget now whether she got scalded or burned but uh, one of the two and uh, she went into hospital and she never really got over it and this was the result of course uh, we, w we went up for the wedding because uh, mum thought a lot of her aunt Edie uh, although she was her aunt she wasn't uh, a, a great many years older than mum and, uh, and when, they were, when they'd been younger they knocked about quite a lot together in October Frank and Sheila were going to an induction uh, in Liverpool of the, the minister who'd been at, uh, at Boundary Road. And while they were going that way, it meant that they had to pass through the old and pass my sister's house. So they decided to take me with them. So what happened was that uh, we got as far as the old and then uh, Frank and Sheila dropped me off at my sister's and they had dinner at my sister's and then they went on to the induction in Liverpool and I stayed the afternoon uh, with my sister and her husband. Uh, well while they were away and they, they called on the way back and had a bit of tea and then brought me home again. 
The first thing that happened in 1977 was that my grandson Martin separated from Jill. And uh, I can tell you, I was quite upset at the time and uh, remained for upset for some time after because uh, I'd been very fond of Jill. She was a kind, kind of girl that had similar tastes to myself and well, there was nothing really wrong with the girl. The only trouble was that she was a bit too ambitious and uh, she wanted to get on and in some respects I suppose she was neglecting Martin because uh, even after she'd finished her work, she, she'd got a, a good job at the council offices in Beeston and she was actually getting on well in, in the council. Uh, uh, and, uh, but she wanted to get on further still. And so it, she was taking lessons at night school and uh, the consequence was that when Martin after he'd finished a day's work, got home at night and uh, instead of his tea being ready like uh, any n normal married man expe expected uh, when he'd been out working all day, of course uh, Jill was off to night school and uh, in various ways they didn't get on well together and as I say I was very sorry because I liked the girl but, uh, and, another, and another thing, of course, uh, I have old-fashioned ideas on that subject. I know I've got to give in to modern ideas, but uh, my idea was that uh, when, you, when you swore in church that you'd keep together till death, does, do, do, death does part, well, I meant that, and, and Mum meant it too. So even though you, f uh, you found out later on that uh, your partner wasn't everything you expected and uh, you, you, you'd like to separate, uh, I mean, that didn't seem right to me because it makes uh, nonsense of marriage. Anyway, I must say that uh, his second choice, Bernie, uh, uh, I found out that she was a very nice girl and I've come to like her quite a lot. Uh, well, every bit as much as I like Jill, perhaps even better, because now, of course, I've seen more of her and, uh, and I, I really do like her now and I think uh, Martin's second choice was certainly a good one and uh, even and Eileen and, and John, well John never seemed to have any doubts but Eileen was like me, she had doubts on the subject and it, it nearly, it, it, there was one time when it, uh, it nearly it led to unpleasantness uh, and she came and stayed about a fortnight with us and left John on his own Anyway, all's well that ends well. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, on 7th of August to be, Martin went in hospital with meningitis. So he had, it, he had us all worrying again. But uh, he got over it all right. Good job. And... Uh, there wasn't much else happened, not uh, worth recording that I can think of for 1977. Uh, only we had another death. Uh, Mum heard that her brother Tom had died, and then uh, not the next thing of any importance was that. When Joan came up in November to stay with us for a, a week or so, because uh, Joan now living near Southampton, it was a long way for her to come. And so we only saw her about once a year, 
and we looked forward to it, I can tell you, when she was coming because we could see both Sheila and Eileen every few days, and sometimes oftener, but uh, with not seeing Joan uh, only once a year, naturally we looked forward to it. In February 1978, Eileen went into hospital uh, I don't remember just what it was for at the time, but uh, in, the, uh, in March, Joan came up for a short stay. She'd evidently come up to, I should imagine, to see Eileen. Uh, and then uh, in May of that year, there was another rally pensioners out into Arrogate, and I went on it because... Uh, as I say, I never missed them because I enjoyed them so much. Then, in July uh, of that year, 1978, Catherine and uh, Mike got married. And uh, although I, I think by this time, I'm not sure whether you whether your uh, mum attended this w wedding. In fact, uh, I'm almost sure she didn't because mum w wasn't so well these days and she didn't go out to, unless it was absolutely necessary. And I, I think on this occasion that I just went to the wedding service and then I came straight back home uh, I don't think I went to Mum's reception. I made a mistake though, didn't I? I said Mum's reception, I meant Catherine's reception. Well, at the risk of repeating myself, uh, when I was uh, speaking about 1975 and we were out of the house in the, the mobile home while our house was being modernised, I don't think I mentioned about Teresa's wedding. In fact, I'm almost sure I didn't. But uh, it was actually while we were in the mobile homes that uh, Teresa was married to Richard Potts. And uh, Mum and I did attend this wedding. And uh, also Joan and Bill and had come up for it. So it was a, a good family gathering. And uh, there was one thing I remember about it was that when, uh, when we got to the church, uh, I never remember seeing so many cars outside the church uh, drawn up. And when we got inside the church, it was absolutely full. So Teresa must have been very popular at, at the United Reformed Church. But to know we had an, it was a lovely wedding and uh, everything went off well and we had some photo, I, I, I know I've got a photo taken with, uh, with Mum and Joan and Bill and uh, our, uh, our, our son-in-laws and they were taken at this wedding. Well, we'll get back to 1978. Uh, after, this was after Catherine and Mike's wedding. On the 9th of August, uh, we had a surprise visit from three of my sisters and uh, my niece, Mona Campbell. Uh, my sisters were... Alice, Phoebe and Hilda, and uh, Mona Campbell's daughter, my niece, Jean, her, name was, her daughter's name was Jean, she could drive a car, and she'd, they, she'd got a car, and she'd brought them all down. And they were here soon after dinner, and we had a nice afternoon and evening together. And it was quite nice seeing them all together like that. Then, the next thing is that, oh, I, oh, well, I think I already told you about 
Jones, yes, I, th I think I've told you about Jones' grandson, Chris, who's had an accident while on his motorbike. And, but uh, ah, I'm, I'm sure I've told you about that. Well, the last thing of any importance in this uh, of 1978 was that Martin and Bernie were married. And of course, once again, because um, Mum not being able to go out, I didn't, I, I didn't attend the wedding. 1979 was the general election year and uh, the, the Conservatives got in. And of course, uh, up to date, they've been in since. But uh, when uh, Mrs. Thatcher, Mrs. Thatcher was made the Prime Minister, it meant that she was the first woman Prime Minister that England had ever had. Uh, then, on September the 2nd of that year, 1979, Frank Crompton, my sister elder's husband, uh, died. And Lynn took me up in the car to attend the funeral because uh, we had to do it all in one day because, because of not being able to leave Mum for any length of time. I couldn't go up one day, attend the, fu attend the funeral and then come back the following day as I would have done had Mum been all right. I had to do it all in the one day and uh, I had Lynn here at about seven o'clock in the morning uh, to take me. She very good of Lynn to take me. It was her day off, by the way. And, and uh, she, she took me up there and we were, we were up at the old house uh, about half past nine. But to, then the funeral was about midday and after the funeral was over and uh, we'd had tea, it meant uh, and had a talk to our relatives and things like that. It, uh, it meant that we had to start back early. And in fact, uh, I think we started back about five o'clock and we were back here by about eight. Oh, well, there was something else. Joan paid us a visit. She came in October and paid us a visit uh, that year. It was in uh, 1980 that Lynn and Stefan were married. It was the uh, 21st of June. And Joan and Bill and Colin came up for the wedding and I don't think they stayed, they stayed a few days, but I don't think they stayed with us uh, that this time because uh, it made it rather difficult with Mum not being so well. She, she wasn't getting any better at all. In fact, if anything, she was gradually getting worse. But they, they stayed a few days and then uh, the next thing that happened was that uh, Mum's sister Prue died. So, and we, again, I, I wasn't able to go to the funeral because of uh, having to, I, I couldn't leave Mum. But uh, all, well, Joan, Eileen, and Sheila, they all went up for the funeral because they'd all been fond of their Auntie Prue. Uh, the, the, when they were children, they'd gone up. Uh, to stay with her sometimes for holidays and so they they were very fond of her. That year in November uh, 1980 was the first time that we met Jenny's second husband Andrew. He'd, c he'd come on a visit I, uh, I, I, I don't know I think he went to Sheila's first but uh, they got Dominic with them and uh, they, they came and visited us on the way home because they'd left Sheila's and come on to us and they stayed uh, 
two or three hours with us before the going back home. In 1981, Mum was now having arthritis to contend with in addition to her other troubles and uh, that was one of the reasons now why she she can't get out and uh, in consequence uh, Eileen and, and Sheila both visit her regularly once a, a week. Uh, Sheila comes on Tuesday and uh, very often she, she brings either Catherine comes with her or Teresa comes with her. Well, when either Catherine or Teresa comes with her, if, if it's Teresa, she brings Matthew, who is our, our, one of our great-grandchildren now, and uh, I'd, t I'd take them out for a walk. It's both a change for me to get out because uh, I can't get out much now. That's the reason there's not much important news because uh, I hardly ever go out now only to do the shopping when it's necessary. And uh, usually I do that uh, when there's somebody here to stay with you, ma'am. That, that's as if I'm going into Beeston. If I'm only going to Central Avenue, I can easily nip there and back without anybody being with Mum, but she doesn't like being left alone. But, uh, as I was saying about uh, Teresa bringing Matthew, and then when Catherine comes with uh, Sheila, she brings uh, Sarah, and then I'll take Sarah out in a pram. And, of course, it's also a good thing because... Uh, I take the children out of the way, and uh, and the the uh, and Sheila and Catherine or Teresa, whoever it is, they're able to have a, a nice talk with with your mum without having to keep their eye on the children all the time. But uh, there was uh, one very unfortunate thing happened in, and this this was in April when. Uh, grandson Jeff, Sheila's boy, he had a nasty accident at work. In fact, uh, the, the, the accident not only